Hello, welcome to this special segment on RoboForm, a very popular password manager amongst uh, the internet community. I am joined by Andy, who is a, should I say, Andy, an advanced user of RoboForm, or how would you describe yourself? Well, I don't know, because one of the things about RoboForm is that it's a keep it simple system. Um, I have been using it for, well, um, since March 2020, just mm -hmm. before just before we went to uh, COVID mode. I actually got it two weeks before. So it, I've used it for a while. And uh, I got to tell you, you talk about a deal that's been going on. You've been talking about Casey Holzman's deal and um, you know, he's always doing promotions and things like that. So can you kind of fill me in on that? What, what's uh, been going on and how often do you hear about the deal and promotions? Well, he, um, he, Terry Holzman, the YouTube personality we are speaking of, has been in the IT industry for 30 years plus. And he decided to leave corporate IT and start doing it out of his kitchen. Well, he, and he wants to share that real-time experience via YouTube. So he does have his own YouTube channel. And so then he started promoting products that he personally uses, one of them being the subject of this discussion, that is RoboForm. And uh, what he did, and he does this maybe once a year, he brings, uh, he brings into a YouTube live room the creator and CEO of the company that created RoboForm, Simon, and when that happens, watch the link at the bottom because it goes from uh, maybe 15, 20% off with, with video link to 60% off. That happens maybe once a year. So that's the time to get it if you're going to get it. Um, and it, 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 it truly is. It's a keep it simple system. There's, there's not a better way I can summarize that. <laughs> and if a user was to register for RoboForm, is it painless to join RoboForm? Oh yeah, they they do. They basically require an email address, and then they, you do create a password to access to create your your RoboForm database account. But other than that, they don't ask for it. The other thing I've been wanting to know is, like, you use RoboForm, and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute what's happening to my information once I put it into RoboForm? Like, can anybody access the information that I've entered into RoboForm? The short answer to that is one word, no. Um, because unlike LastPass, uh, which is the only other one I've seen hands-on, LastPass, mm. LastPass has, LastPass only works online and there's some inconsistencies with the way that they store data, mm -hmm. um, which they've actually made the news because their one of their servers was, was broken into. Yes. Mm. Um, I say that all. <laughs> um, RoboForm is very different. When you create your RoboForm password, you have to make sure that it's complex, but easy to, you know, so, so very complex so that Joe Smith is not going to figure out what your RoboForm code is, but mm -hmm. easy enough that you will remember what your RoboForm code is because what happens is the, the login that you create with RoboForm becomes your RoboForm universal login. Mm -hmm. now, and now you're going to ask me why, you know, why can I trust RoboForm where I can't trust LastPass? Right, right. Um, that's because, number one, all your data is stored on your local hard drive. Mm -hmm. that that's where it lives and the program is programmed to locally encrypt your data which means it turns it all into a bunch of garbage mm -hmm. and there and there's only one way to to make the data usable and that is to use the username and password that you created and yes full disclosure roboform does have a backup server if you pay for roboform premium also mm -hmm. called roboform everywhere but they said that there's no security constraint on our backup server because when it goes to the backup server, mm -hmm. also called the sync server, it is fully encrypted. Mm -hmm. And 
and and the same rule applies. We do not have the key. We do not have a way to decrypt your data. Only you with your username and password can make that data make sense. So the example that did get used right after LastPass was broken into, if they mm-hmm. busted if they busted all the RoboFarm servers, they would get nothing. Mm-hmm. Because the because the backup server only stores the encrypted data and only the users have the keys for that data. Okay. And the biggest thing that I've seen too, and let's go back to the predecessor, LastPass, because I was a user of LastPass, and, and I could tell you what's funny about LastPass is is that you would think that they would be invincible, that they would not get hacked. Well, unfortunately, we learned that the hard way. They they got hacked, and you know they stole um, uh, those uh, keys. They stole the keys to your uh, passwords. They basically they you know stole the one time passcodes and everything so they they basically stole those one-time passcodes and uh you know and and that was kind of the thing they stole the one-time passcodes well you can't steal that you cannot steal a one-time passcode because it it is randomly generated but they what they did get is they got the passwords right right they got the passwords um the one the your what i would call the master password they got the master password, and therefore they were able to access a bunch of accounts with everybody's master passwords on there. Right, that they were able to do, yes. And what's interesting about this is that they reported it like, and I remember getting the email, they reported this the like the day of the hack. They reported it the day of the hack, and they basically said, hey, look. We need you to go in. We need you to change your master password and stuff like that. And they were like, I, I don't know. It, it just sounded a little odd that they, you know, they knew of the hack, but they didn't inform the users until a few hours after the hack. Right. And what was really interesting is you've got you know they're they're basically saying hey if you're on this list if you're receiving this email change your password now i think my biggest question is does roboform do the same thing if somebody was to quote unquote get into roboform and try to steal a bunch of master passwords well well like i said the the if the data is in the cloud it's encrypted so mm-hmm. When it's sitting on the sync server, it is encrypted. Mm-hmm. And the data only decrypts when it's on a user's local device. So like I mm-hmm. so so for example, uh my RoboFarm is actually on right now. Right. Meaning it, it can see that I'm logged into it. Mm-hmm. So so I can actually play with my uh RoboFarm data right now. But the cloud version is scrambled. The mm-hmm. only version the only version of my data that that's publicly viewable Mm -hmm. is the one that's stored on this computer i brought up the roboform website just now and what's really amazing about roboform is what they offer you i mean right now they've got a a new year sale going on 30 percent off of roboform everywhere and for those that that are listening the uh subscription ends today so uh that is the sale ends today yeah the sale ends today so basically if you're listening to this and you know you try to buy the thing you might want to buy it now before it ends because i imagine it ends after midnight tonight Uh, i imagine that's the case that it will end after midnight but if we look at what this offers you i mean as i'm scrolling down here you could i could see what it's offering it's just offering a plethora of things and i'm getting down to where it talks about the subscriptions and what it includes in my opinion if you're just using it if you're the only user um and you're just using it on a pc okay if you're just using this thing on a pc the free one's fine but if you're like you and I, and we go everywhere, 
and everything. We take it everywhere. We go everywhere with it. Then I would do the everywhere plan. And there's also that family plan, which you have, by the way. You told me you've got the family plan. And, um, you know, you live, eat, sleep, breathe um, RoboForm. And that's one of the weird things is you you had gifted me a license to RoboForm, which, by the way, I've enjoyed that RoboForm deal a great deal. I don't think and, – and I'll tell you this. I don't think I'll be letting go of RoboForm anytime soon. I, I, uh, I, I think you've reformed me. <laughs> well, that's – and that's why I was – as soon as – and the, the reason I was able to give such a good um, review of it is because mm. – um, Tell me the number of companies that will allow their company president to be interviewed live here on YouTube or live on YouTube. Right, right. And that's very hard to do. It's very hard to get a company's CEO, let alone anyone for that matter, to do an interview on YouTube about a product. I mean, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Okay. Um, According to this website, um, it shows that the family plan is three ninety nine or three ninety eight, but it says per month billed annually. Now, how does that work? I don't understand that. Uh, what that usually means is you take that number, you multiply it by. Excuse me. Right. You take that number. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you multiply it times 12. Uh huh. And what does that give you? Ah, yes, yes. And that's generally the way that, and that's the way that works um, with it. Um, I'm actually logged into the RoboForm web interface right now. I'm actually logged into that. And I noticed that they have the thing well organized on the web portion of it. They actually have a really good, well orchestrated um, interface, and you see all all the logins that I have from different companies are all stored in here. Mm -hmm. and what's interesting is is that they actually um, they do a lot with it, and that's one of the things I like in. The other thing that I like too is the identities. I I never thought that such thing would get used as much as the identities has. Right. Um, I use the identities a lot. And, and the other thing too is the safe notes. How many times have you had to jot something down for say? You've had to put something on um, a piece of paper, but you don't have a piece of paper and you wanna take that thing and you wanna jot it down on something and you want it securely saved. You want it securely saved on your browser so that you don't have to go fumbling through a bunch of paper and things like that, you know, such as like a driver's license thing or computer login info, or in many cases, people like to, you know, they like to keep it separate from their logins. They like to keep all the information separate. Um, well, in RoboForm, everything that's in RoboForm does get encrypted under your master password. So anything that's in RoboForm is not accessible. Uh, you know, if, if I walk away from a computer and I want to make sure that nobody can get into my RoboForm data, all I've got to do is click log out. Mm -hmm. And that will, that will then scramble all the data on my local computer because it doesn't know who's trying to get into it. In order mm -hmm. to get back in, I'd have to enter my master password again. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the weird thing about RoboForm is that it instantly does and knows in some cases, but it knows where you've been, but yet it's all encrypted. The data is all encrypted and not well, even RoboForm knows where you've been. Well, correction. Um, the stored data, the personal data is encrypted. Mm -hmm. um, so anything stored in RoboForm is encrypted or form data, your passwords, your websites, all that's encrypted. But it, it, it actually identifies, like I'm looking for a, a link right now on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where is it? He's always got it. Um, it's not in this one. Um, 
you know, anything that's in RoboForm is encrypted. And, and the way that RoboForm knows where I am is, mm-hmm. is that it, it actually tracks your, what website you're on by the, UR, by the URL that you're using. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how it knows um, what, what, um, what password to pull up. So it's never a slow process because it knows automatically what your web address that your browser is sitting at is, and it cross matches that with its database and says, oh, he's at google.com or youtube.com or or something. Mm -hmm. And so it can generate my results for me in 20 seconds. Now it's not doing that for me right now because I exactly logged out, but but as soon as I log in, Mm -hmm. two seconds later, it's gonna pop up. Now, let me ask you this, you log out, of RoboForm, okay, what happens to the data when you instantly just, say for example, you close your browser, you shut your computer down and all that, what happens to the data the next time you turn on your computer and all of that? What what happens to the data once you shut your browser off? Um, nothing, because unlike Chrome, <laughs> unlike, okay, um, how many people out there have a favorite browser? Me being one of them. Me being one of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, everybody has their favorite browser, but but everybody usually has two or three browsers on the computer, right? You've got your Edge. Mm-hmm. You you know if you're if you're a classic user, you might know how to get in, into the old IE from mm-hmm. Edge. You've got mm-hmm. your Mozilla Firefox. You've got your Opera. You've got your <gasps> Chrome. <laughs> Yeah, you got your Chrome, which, you know, I sort of have gravitated away from Chrome, and I've gone to Firefox, which, you know, I've been using Firefox for a while now. Okay. I think I've only had, I think I've only had like one deal where I've had to reinstall uh, Firefox, but other than that, I've not had to do any other reinstalls of that. You know, it to me, it's a lot like... Browsers to me are a lot like websites. You know, they might yeah, update you, annually or whatever. Yeah, you can always change them. But that's what's actually nice about RoboForm is mm-hmm. it's it's regularly updated because mm-hmm. it is a, because it is a standalone system. It's actually a tiny little app that runs mm-hmm. on your PC, and it is browser independent. So if I so I love Firefox. I'll say that right now because mm-hmm. it has privacy features and it's relatively light it's lighter than chrome is on right. system resources but um what i like is roboform is roboform and browser is browser right what right. i what i mean by that is i can if i'm logged into roboform which like i said is on its own island it's, it's on it's sitting on its own roboform island and it doesn't care right um mm. i can be in Firefox, be browsing in Firefox for two hours, me, I'm suddenly for some IT reason, I need Edge and I need Edge now. Right. As fast as I can open Edge, because, because Edge can link into, the, link into the exact same database, RoboForm, all my passwords follow me. Now, mm-hmm. the reason I make that distinction is that because most people have a favorite browser. Right, and, and they right. do everything in that browser. They're in that browser ten hours a day. So, what happens is that browser ends up with their passwords, right? Which is perfectly that's perfectly fine. <laughs> but what happens if the browser gets reinstalled? You have to delete your history, mm-hmm. or you have to switch browsers. Now, there's a couple right. of issues with with that. Mm-hmm. When you delete, when you delete, when you delete your personalized browser data, your passwords blow up too. Right. Um, and also, if you have to do quick browser changes, let's say from Chrome to Firefox or from Firefox to Edge, mm-hmm. if you've got if you've got one database of passwords that's in mm-hmm. Chrome or Edge, for example, I pick those because they're common browsers. Mm-hmm. Once you switch browsers, you lose the database. My database right. follows right. me. Right. And I've got the RoboForm app on my phone and for those that are watching you know 
it's a nice looking app. I mean, it's to me, it's dummy down. I, I think of this app as being dummy down. It's like the smaller version of the main uh, computer type thing. It, it's a smaller version. Well, it, no, it, it's not. It's it's actually not any uh, less powerful. It's just <laughs> it's just programmed in such a way that a phone can actually do it. You know, and, and one thing that I noticed about. Roboform is it's updated constantly, meaning they are always updating the version of Roboform to make it better. Yeah, I just got a Roboform update yesterday on the phone yes. side. On the PC side, they haven't had to, but I actually got the Roboform uh, update yesterday as well. I actually got that and I downloaded the update for the Roboform. I was amazed at how quick they actually up the update thing. I was really impressed with that. Yeah, and like I uh, like I said earlier, your your RoboForm database follows you. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if I'm sitting in sitting in front of my home desktop, homebrew PC that I'm actually mm -hmm. talking to you on, or on my Samsung phone, or if I wanted to install RoboForm, I could even hit my past database at a at a friend's house twenty miles away, or fifty miles away, or hundred miles away. It doesn't matter because. Mm -hmm. Because RoboForm is out on its own island, it really doesn't care what I do with it. It just matters, is it you? Right, right. And the, the big thing I noticed, too, is that let's say, for example, you forget your master password. No, I don't want anybody to think, that's oh, gosh. Not, that's, that's, not, yeah, that is not a good thing. That, that's not a good thing if you forget your master password because you forget your master password thing you end up having to reset it okay and their philosophy of it is like if you have to reset your master password okay fine you can reset it but in the process we're going to take all your data and everything that you put on there and we're just going to wipe it out we're going to take everything and blow it up i mean you won't have data after that it's gone so you end up having to redo it all again but see, that's the thing. If you lose your password, yeah, you got to redo it again. So can you right. can you imagine, like, say, for example, you lose your um, master password and you have to reenter all the stuff that you had in your password manager. Can you imagine how long it would take you as a well, user me, to, to, to restore it all? Well, for me, it took three days to set it up because you're talking to a user that didn't have a password manager before RoboForm. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me two days to set it up. But, mm -hmm. um, but they do warn you, do not lose your master password in big, bold, black <laughs> letters. Because as part of the RoboForm security, yes, you can reset your master password. Right. But don't. But don't. But don't because, because yeah because it, because to use the to, because to use the movie war games as soon as you do RoboForm realizes the RoboForm realizes that the encryption key changed so all the data on your computer and in the cloud is no good because nobody can yeah uh, nobody can get no, it no, nobody can decrypt it now so it basically ICBMs all the data in all the instances of RoboForm. <laughs> so, so if you can imagine the DEFCON 1 war games launch of all those missiles, supposedly, that, that, that almost happens in the beginning of the, of the movie, that's what happens to yes. your data in the RoboForm system once that master password changes. Right. The second that happens, the data blows up. It, it basically just explodes, and the password's gone. And you end up having to re-enter every single password that you had. If you were lucky and you had a backup password manager, let's just say you had a backup password manager and you had all your passwords on that backup password manager, then you were golden. But if you didn't have a backup password manager and you ended up resetting it, then guess what? You're screwed. You got to go in and you got to re-enter all the passwords. Can you imagine how long that would take? Well, there is there is actually <laughs> one alternative, and that is to have, once you have your RoboForm account and you have 200 passwords in it, which I'm using the number 200 um, as a high number. 
Mm-hmm. You don't have to have 200 passwords in there to do this. If mm-hmm. you have someone that you would trust with your life, right? I, I'm talking, did, you know, your digital life, you can set up what's called an emergency access, which means you mm-hmm. grant, you, which means you grant anyone on the emergency access list has their own way of getting into your RoboForm data. So before you would reset, you, before you would blow up your master password, which will blow all the data with it, you, mm-hmm. could, um, you could use emergency access to download the password list and, right. and then you know, re-import it later. But in order to do that, you have to have another person who you would trust with your life. Right. Right. And, and I think that's, you see that too. They, they actually say to you, we recommend you having an emergency contact so that if for some reason you forget your password, they can go in, get the password list for you and send it to you. So that way you wouldn't have to worry about having to sit there and re-enter thousands. No, 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 don't get the wrong idea. Your okay. emergency access, your emergency access contact does not get your master password. Really, really. So they don't get the master password. Well, how do they get access to be able to retrieve the stuff? Right. Uh, RoboForm has its own procedures for for linking RoboForm accounts with contact information. So they'll be access. They, so your emergency contact will be able to access your RoboForm database files. So mm-hmm. in, the, in, in the unlikely event of a lost master password, here's what you could do if you have an emergency contact. I could say, hey, Tom, mm-hmm. n- names are simulated. I, hey, Tom, I've lost my rule of form password. I don't know what to do. Tom says, okay, give me five minutes. Tom logs into roboform.com or whatever, using the emergency access key that he has to my mm-hmm. database. Mm-hmm. He then can send, he, he, once he's inside the database, he can say export data and get a list of, a list and a data file of everything that's in RoboForm. Mm-hmm. Right. He, he, can, he, he can then put that on a flash drive and he says, and then he'd have to, you have to call me or something and say, okay, I've accessed the data. You're safe now. Right, right. So he, so he, so he can access the database using a secondary mm-hmm. code mm-hmm. that only he knows. He tells me, "I've got your database file. You're okay." Which is then the signal. It's the signal to me that I can go to go ahead and go to DefCon One and blow up my data because mm-hmm. he's got the, the 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 list. Right. So if you have an emergency contact, you can have the emergency contact download your data. Mm-hmm. And then blow it up, and then reset it, and you're back up and running in ten minutes. Right. That is, but that only, but that particular recovery only works if you have another person out there that you would trust with your life. Right, and and that's one of the things I don't think people realize how important having an emergency contact on the account is, because they also, and and you might correct me on this. Let's say the person who has the account dies. And the family member needs to get access to the account so they can get access to the banking information or the anything that was financial that was on there. They would have to get access to it. Is there abilities to do that? Um, only in an emergency contact case, because if if I'm taking over an account for a friend and they don't give me the master password, mm-hmm. the restart but the reset button is not an option. Because mm-hmm. as soon as I press that, the data is going to blow up, mm. and it's instantaneous too. I, right, I, right, yeah. right. As soon as you, as soon as you update the master password mm-hmm. in in RoboForm Online, everything just goes kablooey. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as the password changes and the and the change is committed, boom, boom, it's done. The, the The passwords are done. You can't get them back. I mean, and that's why when you first use it. It gives that big bold warning, and and I've seen it. It's big, bold, and red, and it's got a big stop sign on it. I mean, how how can you not see that when you're resetting the account? Because if if you don't see that that big bold stop sign, uh uh-uh, uh, it, it 
is not going to help you. And the other thing I always say too is sometimes people don't realize that there are password managers out there and they automatically say, oh, I'll just save the password in my browser. Okay. That's the scenario I was speaking to before because right. yes, you can do that, but mm -hmm. passwords will go with your history data and everything else. So if you are, for example, if you have to switch browsers because you hate Chrome or you hate Firefox or you hate DuckDuckGo or you hate fill in the blank, as right. soon as you stop using your old browser, unless you figure out how to import data between two browsers, you lose mm -hmm. your entire database. Right. Right. And I recommend, and you might tell me if this is correct, do you recommend finding a browser that you like and just sticking with it? it well, you know, as an, as, an, as an IT person, I have my preferences. Like one of my preferences is the is uh, Firefox. Um, that mm -hmm. I, I just like it because it's well accepted by the Internet and it's it's and it's it just works. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have um, a mobile version, so they have, they have the Windows version and the mobile version, and it just it just works. I just like having a uniform experience. Um, mm -hmm. And and RoboForm gives me that in passwords because RoboForm doesn't care if I'm in Edge, in old IE, mm -hmm. in Opera, in Firefox, in Chrome. It, it doesn't care. No. All I have to all I have to do is make sure I have the the appropriate browser extension. But otherwise, RoboForm doesn't give uh, give a hoot. They don't give a hoot mm -hmm. what you use, and it's kind of one of those things that you know you get to learn over the years of using password managers is that you need to find the one that's the most reliable. And I looked on there before I called you. I remember calling you before I called you and asked you the the question I asked you. I went on there and I saw RoboForm got a pretty good rating they they actually got a really good rating and i was really surprised at how well the program was reviewed how well the password manager was reviewed because i've looked at a bunch of password managers and they eh, ratings were okay but did they stack up amongst the rest of them because one of the things i noticed about roboform is they actually have customer support for their users. So if there's a problem, they can email them or chat with them or anything like that. I have yet to see a phone number though for RoboForm. Uh, I have yet to see one. They do hide that, but they have wonderful, um, they have wonderful support at RoboForm.com. But um, note, you only get support underpaid. Right, right. You do not get support with free. Um, you, you, the, well, the thing that you do get with the free, and it does take them a while, is you do get the email support. You, you do get email support with them, but it does take a while. Now, yes, and you do get prioritized if it because when you submit a support ticket, it'll it'll ask you for your subscription data. Right, right. And if you if you have subscription data, you're shot to you're shot to the top of the list within reason. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you've got a premium subscription, mm -hmm. you do have you do have premium support. Right. And that's kind of the thing, you know, if, if a person's going to do the premium, they ought to do the premium because they'll know that, hey, if I got a problem, all I have to do is just contact RoboForm support and they'll get it fixed for me. You know, that's kind of the way I look at it. But one last question, the last question is that I was going to ask you is, has RoboForm ever had downtime? Meaning if they had to go down for maintenance or anything like that? Not that I've ever been notified of. I, I did actually lose access to, here's here's my support story for RoboForm. I did actually, now, um, I am an IT manager. So there so there are certain cases that I do get that I do get master passwords mm -hmm. and for for this one client I did have she did have RoboForm and she did I set up her license so um 
as a matter of administration, I did write down, I, or I did create, I did um, memorize her logging credentials so we don't have to go through uh, emergency access. Although I did hit the hit the emergency access switch too in case in case something goes completely bananas. Um, so so um, so what that means is that basically RoboFarm sitting on my phone. I have to make sure. I have to make sure. Yeah, am I me or am I my client for support purposes? Um, and that means that sometimes I have to switch my phone from my RoboFarm identity to my clients. Well, mm -hmm. one time I was doing that and RoboFarm failed to sync. It didn't right. because when because when because when you're on the phone, it syncs everything, especially right. when you especially when you change your master login. And I was mm -hmm. now. Now, please understand, I was not changing the, I did not use the forgot password button. This was me changing, I, it was changing, you know, from one email address to another. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not forget the password. Do not make that mistake. <laughs> right, right. I simply was, I was switching from my client's account back to my account after doing something one day. And, mm -hmm. and RoboForm Mobile would not sync. Huh. And I was like, okay, well, maybe RoboForm is just, having a bad day so but then i did what we call in it i did the two device test mm -hmm. meaning i logged into roboform from my computer another device mm -hmm. and I, and i hit the sync button on roboform the windows version mm -hmm. and 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 it successfully synced now what that tells me since the phone could not sync but the computer could that means there's no issue with the server right so i knew that I was dealing with an issue with the phone app specifically. So I, mm -hmm. so I went and I submitted a support ticket with RoboForm, and of course they asked me for my username, and password, which is master password, and so they could verify my license and all that. And then they asked me for problem description, so blah 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 blah. Type 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 type. type. And uh, so within a day, I would say, I got an email back. From mobile form saying, yeah, we've we've looked at your issue and your app version, and it is an own issue. And here's how we're going to fix it. We're going to actually push you, and it, we're going to push you. Now this was an Android phone, so we could do this. We're going to push you a download for a version that's not on the Play Store yet. Mm -hmm. And he he said, if you if you know, you sound tech savvy enough. If you know, just download this file to your phone and run it and it'll automatically install the current version of RoboForm that's actually just finishing development right now. Okay. And um, and the, the guy on the email said, if you have any other problems, oh, wow. you know, if you have okay. any other, if you have any other problems, okay. you know, just send a, another message on the same ticket. Mm -hmm. So within, within 10 minutes, I had downloaded the file to my computer, used a USB okay. cable to to get the the the, um, oh. the app file into my phone, I hit install, which is not a procedure that I recommend people do unless they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I hit install, so it immediately recognized that I was doing a manual install, mm -hmm. and so the, the app updated itself, even though it had nothing, it, even though it had nothing to do with the Play Store. The app updated itself. And he said, the real test is going to be when you log in under the version that I sent you, everything mm -hmm. should work perfectly. Oh. And, okay. um, and um, within, oh, so, I mean, it took 30 seconds for the phone to actually pick up the new version. And then I hit log in and everything magically returned to normal. So that's how responsive they are. They, they, oh. yeah, they, they will go right to the end. To right to the limit, try and help you of the hardware you, you, you're using. Now, the reason they were able to push me a version of RoboForm that wasn't on my app store yet was because, in my case, I've got an Android phone. That's not always possible mm -hmm. because iPhone does things completely differently. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so the, the experience I had will change a little bit based on the affected hardware, but everything mm -hmm. worked and every, and everything was, was fine. Oh, okay. Like, and, and right now I am showing RoboForm. Um, now I look at, oh, I'm in the wrong screen. Uh, right now, right now for one person, RoboForm for five years totals out to $83.50 for, mm. for one year. Or, mm -hmm. if, or, 
or you can get RoboForm for families, which is now, before I tell you this number, let me tell you some math here. RoboForm family, as they call it, is mm -hmm. five years long. Five years oh. long. Wow. Uh, um, now, now let, me, let me actually do this again. So think about these numbers. Mm -hmm. RoboForm Everywhere has a one, a three, and a five-year license. Mm -hmm. And the RoboForm individual license for, for five years, one person is $83.50. Huh. Okay, that is for Joe Smith off the street. If Joe mm -hmm. Smith has, if Joe Smith has a family, mm -hmm. Roboform has Roboform family, and this is the one that I actually use. That I actually, I actually gave one of these away to you. Right. That now the family plan is this: one hundred and sixty-seven dollars even. Okay. But before you freak out, let me tell you what <laughs> that is. Okay. It is five years, just like the individual license. So it, mm -hmm. it goes for the same length of time, but it is also five licenses. Okay. So, I mean, so what you have to do is calculator. $167, right? Right, right. Divide it yeah. by five. So when you divide by five, you, you get what your cost is per license. It's $33.40 per person for the five-year term. Okay. Well, that's pretty good, actually. That, that's actually a good deal for a five-year license. Yeah, and that's what I said, and that's why I referred to it as a five-by-five, five, five users, five years. So $167 sounds like they're bananas, but mm. when, you, when you divide that by five for what the cost of one license is, Mm -hmm. For a five year term, thirty three dollars and forty cents. That's wow. basically the cost of a couple of DVDs. <laughs> and everybody loves DVDs. I'll put it like that. Well, myself included. Uh, well, pick your poison. What I'm talking about is, uh, I mean, yeah. it, 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 uh, it, it's not. I mean, if you if you if you get a couple of pizzas, you're basically at that. Mm. Well, I thank you so much for this interview today. And for people that are watching, I will include a link to RoboForm in the description below so that people can see what the latest deals are and try out RoboForm, which there is a trial that you can try and, you know, get your feet wet before you make the decision on whether you want to get the paid version. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.